Okay, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Ansa. I am your helping hand. Da, 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 da. I promise hopefully it will get less cheesy. Um, okay, so today we're going to be doing a proof video. Um, specifically, we're going to be proving that the sample mean of normally distributed data is still normal with the same mu and a variance of sigma squared divided by n. So before we get into the actual proof, I kind of just want to talk about uh, some kind of prereqs, essentially. So these are just things that you kind of need to understand in order to understand the proof. And if you're a bit shaky on it, I would just go and, you know, brush up. But yeah, so essentially the first prereq is the basic idea of how the proof works. Um, so the proof the proof works using MGFs, okay? So you need to know the following, right? Let's say I have some variable uh, A, okay? And it's distributed with some distribution D0, and then I have another distribution, I mean, another random variable B, and that's distributed with some other distribution D1, okay? Now, we're assuming that A and B are different, and we're assuming that D0 and D1 are different. However, if we, if you can show, right, oh, show it, sorry, uh, there we go. If you can show, right, that the moment generating function of A is equal to the moment generating function of B, right, if you can show that, then you have showed that D0 is equal to D1. So the distribution for A is the same as the distribution for B. So that's the basic bare minimum that you need to understand. This is called the uniqueness uniqueness theorem. Um, and basically all it means is that when you take the MGF of some statistic and you find that it's equal to an MGF that you recognize, basically all that means is that you can then say that whatever distributions MGF that you recognize, that the statistic that you were taking the MGF for has the distribution that you recognize, basically. Okay, so that's the first kind of prereq. Then there's, an, oh, sorry, another prereq, which is the following. Um, so I spoke about it earlier, but uh, I say earlier, I mean, um, in a previous video, specifically about the sampling distributions and statistical inference when we did the normal recap. But um, if you have uh, uh, random variables y1, y2, dot, 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 all the way to yn, right, and they are identically and independent and identically distributed according to some d, whatever that distribution is, right, um, and you know that the MGF of yi, where yi is any y, sorry, if that has an MGF, right, um, it's just equal to some function, right, and it has the MGF, then when you take the sum, if I have another random variable that's equal to the sum, I'll just call this uh, s, okay, um, if you have the sum of these random variables, then the MGF of S is going to be the product of all of the MGFs of Y. So that's Y1, Y2, dot, 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 dot all the way to YN. So that, that's one way of writing it. You can also write it like this. Um, so this big pi symbol is kind of like the sigma, but it just means instead of adding whatever term you're doing, you are multiplying. So it's this, this is exactly the same thing, yi of t. Or alternatively, because you know that yi is exactly the same, it's the same function, so it's just yi of t to the power of n. Okay, so that's kind of... Those are the two prereqs that you need to understand in order to understand this proof. And then obviously you do need to know what the moment generating function of a normal is. Okay, so now let's get on to the actual proof. So remember we need to prove, so we prove, we are proving that xn bar is, oh, that's a lovely 
is normally distributed with sum n and sigma squared. Okay, so before we actually do the proof, we need the kind of setup of the proof, which is basically just that we have let x1, x2, dot, 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 all the way through to xn. These are normally distributed with some mean and some sigma. So this is essentially our sample, right? And that's all we're saying is that, let's say we have a normally distributed sample, or we have a sample where each of the sample points or the data points or the observations, each of those are normally distributed, then we need to prove that the sample mean or the average of those sample points is equal to a normal as a normal distribution with um, a the same mu and the variance is just divided by the number of samples we have or sample points. I kind of use sample and sample points interchangeably. Sometimes I'm talking about the whole thing. Sometimes I'm talking about a particular data point. Hopefully you can infer what I mean uh, in context. Okay, so this proof over here, right, is equivalent to, so by M O M G F, which is just by the method of moment generating functions, this is equivalent to proving that M X N bar of T is equal to M Y of T, where Y is normally distributed uh, with the mu and that sigma squared over n. So basically all we're saying here is that if we want to prove that xn bar is normally distributed, well then we just have to show that the moment generating function of xn bar is the same as a moment generating function with the distribution we're trying to prove it has. Okay, so now that we're finally kind of at the point where we can start proving it, we'll get on to the proof. Okay, so the proof. Well, if we look at the right-hand side, right, that's the m y of t, so the moment generating function of t. And if you know that y has this particular distribution, and you know what the mgf of the normal is, then you know that this is equal to m, I mean, e of mu t plus t squared. And then um, what the thing that would be here would be the variance uh, which is sigma squared over n and then divide by 2. So I'm just going to t squared and then kind of sigma squared and then n, right? So that value over there is the variance and this t squared over 2 is just the kind of thing that you need in front of it in order for it to be the MGF of a normal. Okay, so that's the right-hand side that we've now proven that we do know what the MGF of Y is because we're assuming that it's this normal that we want it to be. Now we just have to show that the MGF of XN bar is the same. So, oh, sorry. Um, so we have the left-hand side is equal to M XN bar of T. Now we use the... Um, the definition of a moment generating function, which is just that this is e of e to the t, or the expectation of e to the t xn bar. And now we use the definition of xn bar. So this is the expectation of e to the t, right, times by 1 over n from i is equal to 1 to n xi. And then we can take that um, 1 over n out, and we're left with uh, t over n, sum from i is equal to 1, n x i. Now, at this point, we can do one of two things, right? Um, you can either recognize that this uh, little sum over here is the sum of independent, um, identically distributed random variables. And so because of that, we know that this is the MGF of one of those random variables raised to the power of n. And because we're evaluating it at t over n, we just evaluate at t over n. Oh, sorry, there's one more prereq that you need to know. I 
mentioned this in the normal uh, in the MGF recap of the first video, but if you have m of y of t, right? This is e of e to the t y. Um, now, if you have the expectation of e and some constant t y, this is the same thing as m of y c t. So you're just evaluating it at c t instead of t because the thing that's in front of the y is no longer just a t, it's a ct. Okay, so you could do that here and recognize, okay, using this fact and using this fact over here, you could kind of almost immediately start evaluating this and figuring out what it is. But for the sake of being um, as explicit as possible, I'm going to write out the entire proof without any of those kind of factors involved. So this is just equal to e of e to the t n times x i, um, I mean x1 plus t over n x2 plus dot 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 t over n x n. Now we can use the properties of um, ex exponents basically where if you have you know a to the m plus n this is the same thing as a to the m times a to the n so this is equivalent to the expectation of t over n x1 times e the t over n x2 times dot 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 e to the t over n x n okay so that you can write it out like that um, and then uh, there's another prereq that I realized that is important, but it, uh, it's kind of related to this prerequisite over here. So this prerequisite, which is basically when you take the sum of um, independent random variables, the MGFs become the, uh, the product, basically. The way that you prove that is um, using the fact that well, using this other prereq that we need for this point in time. So the other prereq that we need is that when you have the expectation of x and y, where x and y are independent, are independent, then this is the same thing as e of x times e of y. And that's true for any function of x multiplied by any function of y. Um, so essentially what we have here is we have this x1, right, is independent of x2, which is independent of x3, and they're all independent, right? And we're just taking a function of it and we're multiplying each of these functions. So this is the same thing as the expected value of e t over n x1 times by e of e t over n x2 multiplied by dot 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 e of uh, e to the t over n x n. I'm running out of space. Um, but basically that's what this thing is equal to. And now we can see, okay, this is just the MGF. I'm oh, sorry. Um, this is just the MGF of x1 evaluated at t over n, right? multiplied by the MGF of x2 evaluated at t over n, multiplied by dot dot dot, the MGF of xn evaluated at t over n. And then because you know that x1, x2, x all the way to xn is exactly the same because they're independent and identically distributed, these MGFs are just the same MGF being multiplied together and evaluated at the same thing. And because they're being multiplied together, that means we're raising it to a power. So this is the same thing as MX. I could write MX1 or MX2 or MX3 or any of those values. I'm just going to put an I evaluated at T over N. And then we have to expo exponentiate it because, you know, that's what it is, because we're multiplying it N times. And then we need to think about, hey, what's the moment generating function of any one of our 
any one of our random variables, our original random variables. Well, because we assume that they're normal, that's just equal to the MGF of a normal distribution, um, or specifically because we know that xi is normally distributed with some mu and some sigma squared, and m of xi of t is e to the mu t plus t squared sigma squared over 2. Okay, now remember that we're not just evaluating it at t, we're evaluating it at t over n. So this um, exponent, this moment generating function will become e of mu t over n, right, plus instead of t squared, we're going to have t over n squared sigma squared over 2, and then all to the power of n. Okay, so I just want to clean up the top part here first. So I'm just going to write this as e of, I'm going to write it as 1 over n mu t plus, so the t squared will come out, we'll be dividing by an n squared, and it's just going to go to the bottom. I'm hopefully assuming that you guys know some basic algebraic manipulation, and that's all raised to the n. Then we use the last fact, which is um, this over here, that a to the m multiplied by the n, or a to the m all to the n is equal to a to the m n. So basically what we're doing is we're going to be taking this n over here and multiplying it in, right? So if we multiply it in, this 1 over n and the n's are going to cancel, so we're going to be left with mu t, and on, oh, this should be n squared, sorry, because the n gets squared over here, and it's going to go to the bottom, and then if we take the n over to this term over here, what's going to happen is the we're going to be multiplying n, but we're dividing by n squared, so that's the same thing as just multiplying by, I mean, dividing by n. So we're going to have n squared, sigma squared, over tn, and if we go, I'm um, sorry, over 2n, sorry, it should be over 2n, and then if we go to the top, we can see, hey, that's what we were trying to prove, that's the right-hand side, so this left-hand side, oh, should it, uh, this left-hand side over here is equal to the right-hand side, and so therefore xn bar is normally distributed with the same mu and sigma squared over n. Okay, I hope you guys understood everything that I did. Hopefully I explained every single step without you know making too many leaps. Um, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. If you have any criticisms, put them down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you want to see more, let me know what you want to see, yada, 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 all that other good stuff. Um, yeah, and I will have a link to a PDF where all these proofs are kind of written down step by step. Um, yeah, so you can go and look at that if you don't want to watch this video over and over again. Cool beans, bye!